because this log is pretty equal from end to end, um, I'll do my first cut here and um, I'll take an inch and a half off whatever measurement I find off the top. So I'll take the head of the sawmill and I'll go around the center of the log <clears throat> and I'll, uh, whatever measurement I have, I'll take an inch and a half off. So if you come here, that's the sawmill head. So right at the center of the log here. We've got ten and a half, so I'll make my first cut at nine. Nine inches, I'll lock the head there and I'll make my first cut. So we're in the sawmill building today, cutting a couple logs. <clears throat> I just wanted to go through a few uh, tips, tricks, and uh, some tools that I use. So I've got some tools here that you should have if you have a sawmill. Uh, chainsaw, mini chainsaw. Uh, as you could see, in the, the mini chainsaw is handy for cutting uh, small stickers and the chainsaw you've got to have if you're cutting logs. Uh, I've got this brush and it's a wire brush so if your logs are dirty you just give that a sweep uh, get that at my local hardware store I've got these little wedges I'll show you shortly what I use these for cant hooks I've got three different four different sizes of cant hooks I've got a small one 
for small cans, a medium, a regular one, and a large one for big logs that need really, you know, really need to heave on them to roll them. And I've got that huge one back there, and that's just an antique. That'll be an ornament for in the sawmill here. I bought that off of uh, Marketplace uh, a couple months ago. That's a nice big cantle. Also, I recently acquired this uh, leaf blower, and holy cow, this is a must-have if you're sawing inside the building. I mean, check this out, right? What a cleanup. Uh, once I got into this building with my sawmill, I found it really difficult to clean uh, to sweep and scoop the sawdust in between in the sawmill. It's hard to get in there, right? So with that leaf blower, I can just blow all the dust from underneath the sawmill into one spot here in the sawmill and uh, sweep it and scoop it up. And uh, that's, a, that's a really handy rig to have. This is a steel MS261C. I bought this last summer and this is a... Uh, Great saw. This is a pro saw. Works really good. And there's my mini chainsaw. It's a Saker mini chainsaw. I'll put a link up in the video here. I just made a, a product review on it. <clears throat> really handy tool to have around the sawmill. Really handy. Yeah, so check out this huge cant hooker, PV. This would have turned some logs or uh, Probably wedged out some logs in the rivers and stuff back in its day. I don't know how old it is. Uh, could be 100 years old, I'm not sure. But anyway, that'll make a nice uh, display for here in my uh, sawmill building. It's huge. I got a couple different size wedges here. I'll show you what they're for. <clears throat> So when you're sawing a tapered log, this log's not very tapered. It's pretty equal on one end to the other. But sometimes you saw logs that are really tapered. And so you need to, uh, some sawmills have a tow board. So to lift up the smaller end of the log and make a straight cut. So what I have built, my sawmill doesn't have that tow board. So these are small tow boards. So all I do, I can stick this tow board in here like that. And once the log rolls on here, it just rolls onto this tow board. So say the small end of the log is here, it lifts it up and it'll, it stays there. So I've got a, this is like a two inch one. I've got an inch one. Uh, yeah, just a easy thing. And I can, I can go on one end of the mill or the other. I can come on, if the small end of the log is on the front of the mill, I can put it over there as well or in the middle or on the end, doesn't matter. Yeah, so uh, DIY tow board. So calling up your bandsaw blades, I, couple, I put a couple little clips there to try to show you if some of you aren't sure how to do it. Takes a lot of practice. Um, coiling them is easier than uncoiling them. So, you know, I put a couple of videos there. If you have any questions, give me, give me a shout out. So hold your blade teeth up, uh, say five o'clock and seven o'clock on the, uh, like on a clock, hold your blade in front of you and like swing it down and let it flop down like that. And once it flops down, put your hands together. Get sort of like this. Let it flop down and put your hands together like this and it'll make two rolls and then the other roll, the other coil will come up and you've got it coiled up. Takes a bit of practice, um, but if you sort of know what you're doing, so around five o'clock, seven o'clock, teeth up, flip it down, hands come together. So you see, you've got your two loops, hold on to your two loops, bring your other loop together. There you go. So uncoiling it. <sighs> So you grab your blade, kind of separate it. So this was the one you, you, you pick, you coiled up at the end and there's an X. You see how it makes an X? So take your hand like this 
Hold on to it like that. Hold on to this. And this should let go like this. There you go. And that's how you uncoil it. This one will take a, a bit more practice than coiling it back up. But that's the best way I can explain it to you. Also, always wear gloves. Blades are really sharp. Um, especially when you get them sharp and, and they're uh, really sharp once you get them brand new out of the box. Brand new out of the box, they cut. And it's like a paper cut. So always wear gloves. Um, I don't have safety glasses here right now, but you should wear safety glasses in case you swim back in your eyes. So again, with coiling it out, separate your blade a little bit. You've got that one by itself. You've got that X. Turn your hand around and that'll swing out. You can sort of control it. And like I said, that will take a lot more practice than coiling it up. Coiling it up, teeth up, gloves on. Hold your blade like so. Let it flop down, bring your hands together. Hold on to your two coils, bring that one up. And you're all set. Practice, <laughs> it takes a lot of practice, especially the uncoiling, that takes a lot of practice. So it took me a couple of years to figure that one out, but if you play with it long enough, you'll get it. Coiling them up after a few times, you'll get it. <clears throat> but anyway, I coil them up, and uh, once they're dull, I put a zip tie on them, and they're ready to go to my uh, setter sharpener guy. So a little tour around my sawmill building. I also have a bunch of, I uh, got a couple shovels, brooms. I've got jugs for water for the, the blade lubrication. Some fuel, first aid kit. Uh, I've got my bands, saw blades all uh, hanging there. I've got the dull ones over here. And I got a whole pack of zip ties. So when, when the blade gets dull, I zip tie that. You can get those at the dollar store. They're cheap enough. For those of you who are new, this is my SMG Champion Sawmill. It's the Pro 20. Uh, great sawmill, in my opinion. This is the best manually operated sawmill they make. Pro 20, SMG Champion Sawmill. Uh, check them out at smgchampion.com. <clears throat> They're built in Quebec, Canada. Really good sawmill. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I'll put a link up on the video I made explaining why, uh, in my opinion, best manually operated sawmill on the market. SMG Champion, check them out. And this is a Pro 20, uh, which means it's a 20 horsepower engine. It's got a V-twin Kohler uh, 20 horse fuel injected. So this is our cant. When I started sawing this, I think it was 10 inches. Yeah, 10 inches at the small end. <clears throat> so I've made four cuts on all four sides, four calculated cuts. And this is what I have. So 10 inch log, and I knew I was gonna make two by six lumber out of this log. 
So this is what I've got. On the one side, I have, if you can see, seven and an eight. And here I have, I know it's hard to see, six and three eighths. So I started with a 10 inch log. And I told you my first cut, I always, usually if my log is pretty equal, uh, pretty even, I take an inch and a half off that first cut. And the second cut as well, I take an inch and a half off. And I knew with a 10 inch log, I was gonna make some two by six lumber with that. And I might get a, a few two by fours as well. Because as you can see, there's still a bunch of bark there. So that the few couple of cuts there, I'll probably get a two by four and some two by six. <clears throat> but when I, I cut that four times, and I'm down to six and three eighths on one end and seven and an eighths on one side. And the reason is, you see those green lines? Those green lines are inch and a half. So the reason I'm at six and three eighths, there's your six and three eighths. And the other measurement is seven and an eighth. So I'm making two by six lumber, which means it's one and a half by five and a half, right? That's what you buy at the store. Uh, I was able to get my cut down to seven and an eighth. So every cut is an eight. The blade is an eight thick. So on that side that it's seven and an eighth, when I make another cut, I'm gonna make my cut at five and a half. That'll be my cant for my two by six. And I'll trim him into a two by four probably because I got a little bit of bark there. And when I flip it over again, I'll be at six and three eighths. And that's one, two, three equal cuts to make inch and a half lumber. So I'll probably get one two by four and three two by sixes out of that, uh, out of that cant. And there's a little tip or a little trick anyway. Um, but I'll make an, a few more videos on how to cut different other different size lumber. Um, just so, you know, you don't get waste and stuff. But that's the reason for the 6 and 3 eighths and the 7 and 1 eighths. So with this sawmill building, <clears throat> I always had intentions of putting, you know, old sawmill memorabilia, antiques and stuff. And I'm slowly putting that up. I've got, you know, a couple flags in here. Uh, of course, the Canadian flag there. And I've got old glory flying up there as well uh, for all our American neighbors. And... Uh, I have this little piece of memorabilia. This is an interesting little piece. Interesting piece here. So here in Belleville Cove, there used to be a huge sawmill just, just uh, over next door years and years ago. Um, I don't know, maybe close to 100 years ago, it stopped operating in, the, oh, I'd say the 40s or the 60s. It was a steam powered sawmill. <clears throat> Of course, our economy here is, you know, is built on fishing and, and uh, lumber in the woods. So this bell was the bell in that old sawmill. It was a warning bell. So that bell was in the steam room. So if the sawyers had a problem with the saw or something was going on, uh, they pulled on a rope and uh, it made the bell go off in the steam room and so the guys in the steam room would shut the valves and shut the steam off uh, powering the mill so that's pretty neat to have that in my sawmill i've got another piece of uh, sawmill memorabilia from that same sawmill too and uh, i'll put that in a later video show you that that's uh even just as interesting as that steamer steam room bell so anyway i stuck that in here <clears throat> so anyway um thanks for watching and we'll see you later